Ill Will is a quirky throwback shooter, taking heavy inspiration from classics like Doom, Quake, and Serious Sam in particular, but presented with an offbeat, Burton-esque art style that its makers call wonderfully squelchy. Developed by a small three-person team, Ill Will doesn't feature a plot of any kind, opting to throw players into a wide variety of colorful environments and gloomy atmospheres, meant to spark the imagination while massacring the charging hordes. I played a demo for this during Steam Next Fest some months back, and while that specific demo was a little rough technically, it no less piqued my interest. And when I learned Ill Will had finally dropped on Steam, I was happy to hit that green download button and see how things panned out. Is Ill Will a fresh take on classic mechanics, or just more of the same with a funky coat of paint? In today's video, we're gonna find out. Let's get squelchy. <laughs> I would describe Ill Will's gameplay as simple, but sharp. The game doesn't strive to be anything more than boilerplate old school FPS. You're moving, you're shooting, you're collecting elaborate keys to unlock elaborate doors or flipping switches to progress. There's no advanced movement like dashing or sliding or even alternate fires for your weapons. It's about as straightforward as it gets. Whether that's good or bad honestly comes down to the taste of the player. Some will look at this and go, nope, too simple. Others, it will scratch that itch for good old fashioned old school shooting. Personally, I would have preferred the gameplay to push further than the basic, not just because I like mechanics like dashing and alternate fires, but because I think it would have added more dimension to the challenge, which I'll expound on in just a bit. But like I said, it's simple and sharp, and the sharp comes from the fact that the mechanics that are here are tight and enjoyable. Shooting feels great, nice and meaty, and most of the weapons are satisfying to use. There are two varieties of shotgun that are a blast to use in all senses of the word, and a machine gun that I would describe as delightfully chunky. Not to mention a laser weapon that brings me right back to the pulse gun from Unreal Tournament. The only weapons I wasn't crazy about was the fish launcher and the soul sucker. And it's not because they're bad or anything, they're just not quite as fun to use as the other types. I mean, the fish launcher is a set it and forget it weapon because you have to wait for the fish to eventually drain the enemy of health. Not as exciting as, say, a rocket. <laughs> The colorful enemies pose a decent challenge too, with the roster covering all the typical types. Relentless chargers, projectile throwers, flying types, and pest types. And a small thing I dug is that each level has a handful of secret violins that increase your damage when found. I like when secret hunting has a direct reward like that. Ill Will's strongest levels are its interior ones, where close-quartered corridor shootouts can get pretty tricky. This is certainly the type of game where if you stop moving for just a second, you can have your health utterly melted. Trying to navigate around obstacles in a tight space while dodging laser beams and literal snot rockets, all the while keeping fire consistent, were the most enjoyable parts of the experience. Ill Will also features spacious outdoor levels, which are enjoyable too, however, some of the open design can actually undermine the difficulty. In these open open areas, enemies come at the player in Serious Sam-esque waves, which is pretty awesome and got me feeling overwhelmed the first time I faced them. But here's the thing, most of the enemies are pretty slow and lumbering, even the faster types, and the AI is single-minded. All types basically beeline it right to you, and while their projectiles can be intimidating, consistent movement will pretty much always keep you clear of them. So, if you're in a wide open area, with few obstacles, and keep an uninterrupted circle strafe, it's not hard to corral all the enemies in the center and just hold down the left mouse button until they're licked. And once I figured this out, it trivialized a lot of the bigger arena fights, which is not a good thing for this type of shooter. Now there are a few enemy types that can throw a rock in this, small pest drones with highly accurate lasers, and obnoxious hit scanners that look like evil me-seeks, which the dev loves throwing at you in groups whenever they want to inflate the difficulty. Difficulty. Yeah, because most FPS fans love the fun challenge of being unfairly massacred by hit scanners. In all fairness, this room I'm being slaughtered in is optional, but it does represent how this enemy type is used in several portions of the game. <laughs> Anyways, all this still doesn't change the fact that the dev needed something that could better counter players from doing this. Perhaps it would have been as simple as making normal movement speed not enough to dodge certain projectiles, thus making players have to rely on a dash or slide mechanic to defend themselves. Which brings us back to why I think it was a bummer Ill Will didn't strive to have these mechanics. I don't think this ruins the game or anything like that, but it does take some of the bite out of these larger levels. To 
To Ill Will's credit though, I do think the game gets better as it progresses. The later levels were my favorite of the game, with some of the more inventive and outright playful level design, and they're more visually interesting. So if the early maps make you go, meh, the later ones will surely be an oh yeah. Boss fights also leave something to be desired. All the bosses are larger, souped-up versions of the main enemies, or should I say king-sized versions, as they're all called king and have a crown on their head. This isn't necessarily a bad idea for boss fights. I mean, some of the unique qualities of the enemies work well with it. For instance, Pain Head self-destruct when they reach you, and thus King Pain Head will kill you instantly if he comes close enough. <laughs> but a lot of the enemies don't lend themselves to fun boss fights. King Behemoth, like the normal version, is slow, easy to hit from a distance, and has easily dodgeable projectile attacks. Far from an ideal boss. In fact, the hardest part of his fight, well of all the boss fights actually, is the massive horde of enemies surrounding them. More often than not, I was able to dispatch the main boss painlessly. The horde is where the pressure was felt. And with this, I can't help but ask, was the boss fight even necessary? Perhaps just making these big, balls-to-the-wall arena battles would have been the better course. They also lack creativity. It's too bad these bosses aren't distinct characters with unique designs. Seriously, they're just blown up models of the normal enemies with a slight reshade and a crown put on top of them. It's a little lazy and a bummer when so much of this game oozes creativity. I'll be honest, I find this game's visuals to be a bit of a mixed bag, but at first blush, Ill Will is not a bad looking game. Built in Unreal Engine 4, it takes advantage of its horsepower. Lighting is used to great atmospheric effect, and reflections are eye-catching, giving environments an attractive polish. Artistically, I would describe the game as expressionist, although it does lean into surrealism with clear nods to Salvador Dali. Another way to describe it is that the game feels like it was ripped from an edgy stop-motion animated film, the kind you could find a t-shirt for at Hot Topic. The influence of Tim Burton films is clear, Nightmare Before Christmas, Corpse Bride, Frankenweenie, as well as the films of Laika, like Coraline and Paranorman. It's not your typical looking old school shooter, and the artistic direction is a breath of fresh air. The best visual element is the enemy designs, being quirky and humorously creepy, with a bit of a low-poly look that fits nicely, and they're animated well with some wiggly physics and decent gore. Also, is it just me, or do these guys look like Fantoon from Super Metroid? I have my criticisms though, and they lie mostly with how some of these levels look. As nice as the lighting is, and cool as many of the decorative assets look, more often than not I found big portions of these maps that just looked underwhelming and plain. Big square rooms with samey looking textures that, I hate to say, come off as amateurish. You'll see various assets thrown into these places meant to flesh them out, but it's clear that they were placed without much intention other than to break things up visually, and it just feels awkward. I do appreciate how different each level looks with some striking scenery, but some levels just fall flat artistically. One has you going through a town that's pretty much all flat gray. I think the intention was to give it a film noir feel, which is cool, but ultimately the level just looks unfinished, and the repeated building models only make it more monotonous. <laughs> On the technical side, the game is excellent. The frame rate was locked and smooth from start to finish, with minor bugs here and there, and zero crashes. If I had a tiny complaint though, there's no option to turn off the game's motion blur and film grain effects. Not that they're distracting or anything, but there's always going to be players that will want to switch these off, and personally, I could have done without the film grain. <laughs> Audio is also a bit of a mixed bag. The music is fun and catchy. The beat-heavy tracks somewhat reminded me of the artist Danger, but with a more whimsical spin. And sound effects for weapons and enemies are solid. Otherwise, the sound design has some holes in it, as in missing effects for things like bullet impacts and some of the doors. I had more critiques for the sound, specifically with the audio mix, as I found that sound effects for the environment, enemies, and your own character's footsteps were just mixed too low and were often drowned out by the music. But while I was putting the finishing touches on this review, the developer did release a patch that addressed this, and they were improved. However, the missing sound effects I mentioned are still missing. Hopefully we'll see some more work on this in coming patches. 
Ill Will is a fun but otherwise average first-person shooter. The strengths are clear, but so are the flaws and missed opportunities. If you're looking for a straightforward, tight, old-school experience and want something with a cool artistic spin, you'll find enjoyment here. But for the hardcore FPS crowd, particularly those that play a lot of indie and throwback shooters, I doubt this will do much for you. There just isn't much here that makes this game stand out in a niche full of excellence. It's absolutely a talented effort, but I'm more interested to see what the dev does next with what they've learned here. And that's it for me. What are your thoughts on Ill Will? Be sure to let me know down in the comments. If you dug the video, please be sure to subscribe, like, share, and smack that bell. If you want to come say hi, my Discord is linked below, along with my affiliate links. I'm Kirk, and thank you for watching this video. Stay safe out there.